Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and the topic of today's show is Our Moral Choices Teach Us They Are Not From Free Will. Okay, and like before, I'm not going to explain why I've got this sign on, on its side. I mean, you could like, if you want to like know why, like check out my last two episodes because I explained it before. Um, and that's my book. I wrote a book like, um, I published it December 2nd, and like, you don't have to buy it because, like, you can download it for free from Google Books on, on a PDF, and it's an excellent book. I mean, it's it's really it's really good. Okay, um, so yeah, now as as I always do before we you know before each show, I go through like you know a definition of free will, and then you know why we're doing the show, why the show is important, and then you know a brief refutation of free will. And so let's do that. Okay. When people say they have a free will, they're saying that, like, whatever they do, whatever we do, whatever anyone does, is up to them, is up to them without anything that is not in their control, either taking part or having anything to do with the decision. The decision is completely up to them. And automatically, immediately, you can see that, 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 that it's wrong. Um, again, I, I did a show recently that... Um, 10 ways to refute free wills. There are various ways to understand how free will is impossible, but the main one is that um, everything has a cause. Uh, think about it. Things happen for causes. There's reasons why things happen. Um, you can't even, like, can you imagine something happening without a cause? That, that, that makes no sense at all. Um, you know, I want to go through the state of the universe um, explanation of this because ordinarily, like, well, what I'll explain is like, all right, we make a decision and there's a cause to that decision and then there's a cause to that cause and a cause to that cause and you have this causal regression going back to, you know, before we were born, before, <coughs> excuse me, before the planet was created, before the Big Bang and all that. Well, I don't know, Big Bang. But anyway, but what I want to do to kind of like to describe why free will is impossible is explain causality from the perspective that is most comprehensive and most general. And that is like what's happening in our reality, our universe, is that like our universe is evolving <coughs> moment by moment, causally, from state to state to state. What I mean by that is like, you know, as far as, as our scientists can tell, um, you know, we can go back about 13.7 billion years to where there was, like, theoretically or presumably this Big Bang that, like, you know, it's kind of, like, difficult to understand, but apparently the entire universe was, like, really, really condensed in this, like, you know, and then it just, like, burst, you know, out and all. And, <clears throat> and so what happens, like, after that, you've got time, okay? You've got time, and so, like, the state of the universe, for example, at the moment immediately subsequent to that initial moment of the Big Bang was caused by, completely caused by the, that initial moment because there's nothing else to have caused it. Think about it. And, this, and, like when, and, and I use the, the universe because like nothing can escape like the universe. And, you know, by definition, nothing ex exists outside of the universe because like uni means one and I don't know what verse means, but I think it means everything. So there's only one of everything. And for people who like believe that there's like multiverses, well, when you think about it, these multiverses would have to be a part of this one general. So, so the idea is like, all right, so you've got the first moment of the Big Bang completely determining the state of the universe at the second moment of the, you know, of the universe. And that second moment is completely determining the, th the third moment and the fourth moment. And, you know, we don't have to, like, define moments in terms of, like, time intervals, like, you know, seconds or whatever. It's just, you know, <laughs> it's sequential, okay? So, again, <clears throat> if, you, <laughs> if, you, um, if you take that causal chain from the past, from the Big Bang, to the present, you realize that the state of the universe right now, right at this very second, right at this very moment, was, is the complete result of that state of the universe, that causal, 
cause and effect, you know, moment by moment that started with the Big Bang. So that like what I'm saying, what you're hearing, what you're seeing, what you're doing, what you're feeling, what everything that's going on is part of this universe and it's part of this causal um, chain of, of cause and effect. All right, and that is why free will is impossible. There are other ways to, um, to understand this. And again, I can refer you to, it's called 10 Ways to Refute Free Will, because these, these videos are all on YouTube, so. Okay. Um, and, and the purpose, the purpose of this show, I'm tired. The purpose of the show is like, you know, to the extent we believe in free will, we, um, we, we suffer more, we, and we make other people suffer more. Like, for example, if somebody did something to you, right, something that you consider wrong, hurtful, but, like, you understood that they had absolutely no choice but to do that, well, you're not going to re really blame them. You're not going to, like, say, well, they're evil and, they, you know, I'm going to get them back. And, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of times in life, you know, somebody does something wrong toward you, and there may be a pragmatic reason for, for kind of like, you know, if somebody hits you, you might want to hit them back or something. I don't know, like self-defense. But like in terms of like, you know, in terms of like, you know, just thinking that a person needs to be punished or, or you seek vengeance towards somebody because they did something wrong. You know, when you understand that free will is an illusion, that it doesn't exist, that reason for, um, for you know, just like, feeling angry toward others, blaming others, um, aggressing toward others. It just vanishes. There's, there's no reason for it. Okay. Um, so, all right. The, the, um, so let's get into this. Let's get into this. Um, so our moral choices teach us they're not from free will. And the idea behind this is like if we look at, you know, if we examine our moral choices, logically we can understand that they're not freely willed it's just like you know just if we take the time to consider them to understand them so like you ask yourself first of all can i always do right um saint paul actually writing in romans in, in the uh, new testament he he actually was i think the first person in christianity to 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 um to realize this he you know he writes somewhere there you know well wait a minute you know I, I, I find that I want to do right, but sometimes I realize I can't. And so when we ask ourselves that, we realize, no, we can't always do right, because if we had a free will, we would do right all the time. So like, all right, you ask yourself, you can't, you know, you ask yourself if you can do right, and you recognize, you acknowledge, no, I can't always do right. And then you ask yourself, well, why can't I always do right? Naturally, it's because you don't have free will, but we can go beyond that. Um, but there's a caveat to this. Um, since the time of the Greeks, they kind of understood that, um, that, you know, whenever we're doing anything, at the time we're doing whatever we're doing, um, we, um, we think that it's the right thing. A lot of times, you know, like we will rationalize, um, in other words, like, or, or in hindsight, we'll realize, wait a minute, you know, I thought it was right at the time, but, you know, I guess now, now I realize it's wrong, you know, but, but at the time we're doing stuff, we, um, we always think we're doing right. Um, so anyway, then you ask yourself, all right, why can't I always do right? And there are various reasons. Um, one of them is like weakness of will. You know, like, you know, let's say, let's say you want to lose some weight or, or let's, um, or let's say you, you, you've gone out drinking and you've drunk, you've drank too much and you know you shouldn't drink anymore but, you know, you don't have the will to kind of like, you know, drink less, all right? So that's like, there's a weakness. Then, then you ask yourself, well, why? Why is like, why can I like, you know, let's say drink less or eat less at some times, but not at others? You quickly realize that, well, it could be like emotional states. It could be, could be the weather. It could be so many factors you're not in control of. That's the thing. You recognize that... Um, that um, that we can't will ourselves, you know, with, with willpower to just like do right all the time. It's just, you know, again, if we had a free will, we could, but, but that, 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 that tells you we don't have a free will. Okay, another, another reason why we don't always do right is because like we're not always taught. Um, you know, 
even though we think it's doing right, it may be wrong. Like, for example, with gypsies, I, you know, I hear this. I, I've never really studied gypsies so much, but I, I, I've heard that, like, sometimes, like, they're taught that stealing is right. You know, it's part of their culture. Or, like, in another, like, in our culture, we're kind of, like, taught to not marry our cousins or something, you know, because it's just wrong. In other cult cultures, it's right and stuff. So, like, a lot of times this morality, it's kind of, like, it's culturally determined. So, like, you know, what, what may be right in one setting or to some people may be wrong, you know. Some people eat dogs, like, you know, in, in other parts of the world. We wouldn't think of them. Oh, God. Um, but, um, but anyway, so, like, sometimes we think right and wrong. And, again, this is, like, you know, this is subjective. And, like, you know, there, there are certain things that we all, I, I would hope, agree is, is, is wrong, you know, like murder and stuff like that. But other things are like, kind of, like, subject to, to different um, interpretations and all. Okay, and again, you know, like, so you ask yourself, why can't I always do right? And um, because we, we rationalize. We, we say to ourselves, well, um, you know, I, um, I shouldn't eat that, that extra piece of cake. You know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I really shouldn't. But, um, but you know, you want to know something? I've been, I've been really good today, and I deserve it. <laughs> I mean, it could be rational say, rationalization. Maybe, you know, maybe you really do deserve it. Maybe it's not wrong to eat it. But, but a lot of times, you know, we'll just rationalize. We'll make up a reason. Um, um, okay, and, and other, other times, you know, it's just like, well, I just want to do it. I don't care. I'm doing it. So, like, and, like, we're not in control of these things. You know, we just, like, we can't. Because, again, going back to the general theme, if we had a free will, it's not the general theme, but if we had a free will, we would not ever do anything wrong because that's that's where that's that's how we're conditioned that's how we're made the greeks knew this as i was saying all right um <laughs> um two people are faced with the same decision all right one way to like understand um this morality thing in terms of like you know um how you how it explains it wouldn't have free will let's say consider two people Okay, and one person does right, um, cheats on a te um, doesn't cheat on a test. <laughs> okay, the other person does wrong; they cheat on a test. Okay, then you ask yourself, all right, well, why why did the one person do the right thing and the other person do the the wrong thing? Again, you can go back to the things we we're just going through. Maybe the second person was saying to themselves, well, you know, this, this first person, this other person who, who didn't cheat, you know, they, they had more advantages than me. They came from a rich family. They had encyclopedias in their home. They had, a, you know, internet and stuff. I didn't have all this. I was, like, disadvantaged. It was, you know, um, it's not fair, so I'm going to, like, equalize this, okay? Right, wrong, whatever. Um, or or you, might, you might say... Um, to yourself, well, the person who did right, um, who didn't cheat on the test, was taught that way. You know, the, his parents, her par parents, <clears throat> taught taught them not to um, not to cheat, and that's why they don't cheat. Whereas the other person, you know, their parents that you know that well, you know, you shouldn't be too perfect. You know, sometimes it's a right to cheat, and like even in our culture, we kind of like are conditioned, like you know, like who who doesn't like you know, speed, you know, when driving sometimes or whatever, you know. Um, there, there are different ways that, that we kind of, like, condone it. All right. Um, so, yeah, so what happens is w when you ask yourself with two people why one person does right and another one does wrong and you look for the reasons, you eventually, whether it's, like, the way their parents taught them or their rationalization, you know, their, their, their view of fairness and unfairness and stuff, you'll eventually come to a point, and you can keep asking, you know, <clears throat> you know, in a chain of questions like this, eventually come to a point, well, you know, people don't choose their parents. Um, people don't choose their experiences. People don't choose, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, and, and the other reason, I mean, like, Okay, um, again, I'm, I'm going to kind of like explain another reason why free will is impossible. That it kind of relates to morality. Because like with morality, we, um, 
most of it is environmental, okay? It comes from our parents, it comes from our culture, it comes from, you know, our experience and all. Um, but they found in studies that, like, you know, even kids that are very, very young, they have, like, a sense of justice, like infants, um, other animals. There's, like, an innate conscience that we have. So basically, if it's not our, our environment determining whether we do right or wrong, it's going to be our, our genetic makeup. And, and so how does this, like, explain, help, help us understand why free will is impossible? Well, like, think about it. Um, in science, there was a debate for, for decades, you know, whether human behavior was the result of nature or nurture, okay? That was like debate in science, you know, behaviorism and all. Psychology, they ultimately, you know, through a lot of experimentation, I mean, like, you know, reasoning, whatever, they ultimately came to understand that it's not an either or, it's a combination, okay? But, but the relevance to that in, in this matter of a human will is that it's not nature, nurture, and free will determines our behavior. It's like nature or nature and nurture. There's no third option, okay? That, you know, and so like, it's kind of curious to me because like they teach kids in school that, um, that, um, that our, our behavior is a result of nature and nurture, but they don't teach them the, um, you know, the logical extension of that, that, you know, because <laughs> nature and nurture um, determine everything, you know, we don't have a free will. And they don't do that because, like, you know, um, well, because our criminal justice system, I did a show on this a couple of um, shows back, and our churches, our religions, they need free will to be able to justify either punishing people or, like, scaring people like you know threatening people with hell you know with religion you know if you don't believe this person's the messiah if you don't believe you know if you if you if you um if you do a certain thing like you know the catholic church used to have the thing that you can't you have to eat fish on friday all right so if you if you didn't then you're 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 doing something wrong and if you accumulate enough wrongs you're going to go to to you're going to suffer eternally after you die and religions needed apparently you know they the universe don't blame them don't blame them. you know the universe made religions the people who created religions think it was a good idea to to um to threaten people like that and um so the idea is that um that it, it depends, you know, those kinds of, like, threats, um, punishment, that require free will. So, like, so a lot of times our kids are not taught that we don't have a free will because, like, it would be against, like, the very structure of, of our society. And, you know, our society is changing. This, this uh, global revolution, this global Occupy revolution of 99% versus the 1%, it's going to change the whole world. Uh, before, like the last revolutions, excuse me, revolutions were like people in general versus the monarchies. The monarchies, you know, these kings and queens all over the place, just like, you know, I, God made me king, <laughs> and, you know, and I can do whatever I want. And, you know, so like finally people said, no, no, sorry, can't let you do that anymore. And the same thing is happening now with these like really rich, powerful people that are like using their power and wealth for their benefit and destroying the world in the process. So like, so as we, as we come to this brand new world we're creating, this this understanding that free will is an illusion can be extremely helpful. I'm, I know I'm going through an aside, but this is important, you know, because like to the extent that we understand that free will is an illusion, nobody has a free will. The one percent doesn't, doesn't have a free will. The nine percent doesn't. Nobody has is in control of anything. To the extent we understand that, then the universe, because again we're not in control of it, the universe will by logical extension, get us to treat each other more kindly. I mean, we'll still take the power and the money, the inordinate power and money from the, um, from the rich, because like, if we don't, then the planet's not going to survive climate change and, and the you know, global economy that, that really needs a great amount of repair and stuff. But so, and, and again, that's, that's another reason why this show is important, because the, the faster people get this, the, the more unnecessary suffering and anim animosity and aggression we can we can avoid okay so back to the uh so let's see okay now some some sometimes people will say well you know i just decided to do something that was right 
and um, I just decided it for no reason. You know, I just like you know, it's it was right for me to I don't know, to give to charity. I mean, it's a good thing to give to charity. So like some people say, I did it just because like I it was for no reason. But like when you examine that reason, again you you go back to the fundamental principle in in reality nothing happens without a reason there was um the first person who to um that's recorded at least in the west as is, is having written this is Lysippus he was a greek and i think it was around 380 AD or so he he said nothing happens at random but but everything for a reason and that was like the first statement of causality that was basically saying that everything has a cause all right so again um when when somebody says no, look i just decided to do right there was no reason no there was a reason and again you go back to our like explanation of the state of the universe why you know all that stuff um the causal regression back in time then you understand that um that that's just like you know that's just a wrong wrong conclusion and um yeah all right so let's see we got about six minutes left um all right, and then some people just say, well, like, you know, I I decided to do this right thing of my own free will. You know, they'll just say, I just that's just it. it I did it of my free will. But when they say that, what does that mean? Your, your will was free from what? Was it free from causality? Was free, was it free from the the upbringing of your parents? Was it was it free from the way culture has conditioned you? Again, that's not an answer. Sometimes people will say, I did free. I I did. Um, I did right, and I don't know why I did what was right. Okay, I just don't know. And that's why, but but it was freely willed. Well, if you don't know why why you did something that was right, it obviously wasn't freely willed. Because like, freely willed by definition means that you consciously willed something. You know, if if you, if you have a, you'd have to have a reason to do something freely. You know, that's 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 how we we understand um, free will. So like, all right, now um, so what what's actually happening whenever we do everything? Um, Okay, so when we do right, when we do wrong, when we think we're doing right and real, we realize it's wrong, when we correct ourselves, it's always the universe. You know, it's the universe making us do this. Uh, and this is surreal. This is like, again, I did a show that like you don't want to blame yourself and others by, you know, through this understanding free will is an illusion, but you don't also want to blame God or the universe either because like you know to the extent you don't blame God or the universe then you don't become angry at anything and that I think I would theorize I would expect that that's a better state for people to be in in general but but the surreal part of this is like one the universe gets us to 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 wrongly to completely wrongly believe we have a free will okay and that sets the stage for everything then the universe makes us do wrong because again who among us is perfect you know we do wrong and it's kind of like almost a definition of being human. that's why we have a criminal justice system that's why we have religion you know to help us to do right so like so the universe gets us to do wrong and then the universe will punish us for what it made us do that makes no sense to me that's just like to me it doesn't seem fair at all all right but then i remind myself well you know like the universe gets gives us a lot of good stuff a lot of blessings you know a lot of happiness and we don't deserve that either because like you know not having a free will it wasn't up to us but even so i just like you know it just it's like it doesn't make sense the universe like you know if i was the universe if we were the universe we um we would not we wouldn't we wouldn't like um have anyone do anything wrong and, and you know at any time um i don't know if this is like um part of like the adam and eve story they were they were in the garden and, and I, guess, I guess they weren't doing anything wrong they were in paradise and so they eat from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil it wasn't an apple because you know they didn't have apples back then people think it was an apple it was i don't know um I mean, they didn't have apples in that region of the world back then, but um, which is like back then is about I don't know, however, whenever that story was created. Um, so who knows? Um, but that was the premise. Like before, you know, they did that. 
presumably they um, they didn't do wrong, you know, and and it's, it's kind of like you know sometimes when I when I um, conjecture about like you know well the universe should have um, should have made us all perfect angels that you know never doing wrong at any time. A lot of people will say, well, no, that's not impossible because you always have to have an opposite. It's like you can't always you know be completely happy because like you know you have to have like some suffering in order to appreciate the happiness and people a lot of times people get sucked into that but no that's not because like at the same time people will say well what all right what happens when you get to heaven because like a lot of people believe you know if you if you do enough right if the universe <laughs> makes you do enough right in this world you'll go to heaven and well then you ask people about heaven and they'll say well heaven is a place where like you know it's complete bliss you know no pain at all and where everybody is a perfect angel. All right, so like if, if it could exist in heaven, why, you know, you got to ask yourself, why did the universe have us go through this like transition of like, you know, the pain and then the wrongfulness to then zoom us up to a place? And personally, I believe we all go to heaven because like that's, you know, I mean, the reality is we have no idea what happens when we die. So to me, it's like the most pleasant belief possible. And so it makes me the happiest. And that's why I believe it. But to the extent that we all, you know, believe that, that would be cool. I lost my train of thought. Anyway, we've got a, a minute to go. So, all right. So what, what's happening? Um, when we do right, we're lucky. Okay, we're lucky because, again, the universe that makes us do right tends to reward us when we do right. When we do wrong, we're unlucky. But now, in terms of luck and all, we're lucky that we're learning that free will is an illusion to the extent that we understand that free will is an illusion, that we're all, you know, robots, puppets, automatons, that everything's a movie. To the extent we appreciate that and, and come to enjoy it, watch my last show, it'll teach you how to do that. Um, we can avoid a lot of unnecessary pain because that's what this show is about. That's what life is about. You know, my last show before this was called The Happiness Show. It was about, like, you know, happiness being the point of anything, you know, like, because we're, we're, we're pleasure. Our basic drive, who we are is we seek pleasure, we avoid pain. That's who we are biologically. That's what all life does, all right? So anyway, so to the extent we overcome this illusion of free will, we can, we can create a much, much better, happier, more good world for ourselves and anyone and everyone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time on Exploring Illusion of Free Will. Thanks.